Welcome you all to this course on defects in materials. In the last two classes, we have looked at or studied the stress and strain field around uh, screw, edge and mixed dislocations and also the because of the stress and strain field around this dislocation, what is the increase in energy which will occur in the material and which is called as the self energy of the dislocation. Okay. Then we looked at this self energy itself is can be considered as equivalent to a line tension. Okay. That is because dislocation can be considered like a line which is uh, quite taut. So that tension, how to derive an expression, how the line tension can be related if a dislocation is bent. Okay. What is the sort of stress which will be required to a bend to a particular radius? These are all the aspects which we have looked at it. In the next few classes, we will look at if you apply an external stress to this dislocation which are essentially creating internal strains and stresses within the material, what are the type of forces which will be acting on the material? Okay. What is the first thing which you should uh, to understand the force on dislocation? Okay. Because we know that uh, what we are generally applying to a material is when we apply a load, we always try to find out what is the stresses which are acting on different surfaces. That is the information which we have. Okay. Let us consider this case where there is no dislocation is being considered. It is on a surface, one plane which we call it is a slip plane over which the one layer of an atom moves on top of it the other. In this particular case, okay, when a stress is being applied, okay, what are types of forces which we can have? When we apply an external stress, okay, it will be doing some work. Suppose you assume that the case where there is a dislocation is present in the material. What does this uh, dislocation do? This dislocation, we will see that the dislocation moves from one position to another. Okay, we are seeing the image of the dislocation which is moving. That means that when the dislocation moves, we can consider that this force is essentially or this stress is doing some work on the material. Correct? So one, when a dislocation is present, there is a stress and strain field around the dislocation. That we can calculate what is the energy, that is the self energy of the material. When we apply an external stress, In this direction we are applying the okay. the dislocation moves from here and reaches here. So what we will see is that as a function of position of dislocation in the sample, the self energy remains that same, it does not vary, right. Only think what the external stress Thus, it makes the dislocation move from one region to another region it has moved. It is equivalent to a unit length of a dislocation we, let us consider, okay, let us sample. This length, assume that it has moved some distance dx, okay, the dislocation has moved under the action of the stress which is applied. So what is the area which it has covered? The area which will be into 1 into dx, correct? It is a unit length. This area if you multiply it by the stress, that gives the force which is acting on that area, correct? This can be written as Vx into dx, correct? This is the stress which is uh, force which is acting on that area of the because stress multiplied by area gives the force acting on that. But what it has done whenever any dislocation moves it displaces every atomic layer by a bias vector. That means that if it has moved from here to a position here and this distance is dx. okay. 
this much layer which was originally was there at some position has been displaced by a bias vector always correct the total moment it was like this each layer has moved means that from here the next position when that's going it has been shifted by a bias vector so that is the displacement so if you put that displacement into account now we gets what is the work which is being done to move the dislocation correct so this is a form of an energy which we get it and the force is nothing but minus dx which it will turn out to be this will be sigma yx into b it will come correct we have looked at the work right so that is what this expression which it gives is the what is the total energy okay now in this we can look at it this way suppose we assume that you yeah, cross the slip plane okay if you look at it this is the slip plane you yeah, around the slip plane the top layer and the bottom layer is being relatively displaced correct what is the displacement which has taken place dislocation which was there initially here it has moved to this place suppose we assume that on the dislocation a yeah, force which is acting on that unit length of the dislocation it has displaced it by this distance dx then this force into displacement becomes the work one will be opposite of the other and we can equate this to dx right from this immediately we can get that force will be equal to sigma v into x the sigma v into uh, that sigma that shear stress multiplied by bias vector but only problem in this way of looking at it this gives a qualitative way of how to find out the force okay but which direction the force is acting we don't get any information from this sort of an expression because in this particular case which we had given it here the bias vector is in the negative direction okay then sigma xy is applied in this direction okay and with respect to a definition which has been used if we substitute for the value of b here the b is minus because in the negative direction the force turns out to be in the positive direction okay this way we all we can find out the situation becomes more complicated when we look at a force on a screw dislocation what are the types of uh, forces which can act on a screw dislocation that is if we consider a block the material where you assume that a screw dislocation is they are going this block and coming out onto this surf okay because the symbol which we use is we use the same symbol for a screw and an edge dislocation okay we should not confuse it with it so this is what is there in this block is a screw dislocation okay the coordinate system which we are using it is x y and z is the coordinate positive z direction this is the direction u of the dislocation which we take it okay the stress can be applied in this direction this will be so on the negative side of it will be applying it in opposite direction then which is the direction in which this dislocation moves here actually the expression tells that the force is equal to into b it turns out to be but in which direction this force is going to act on the dislocation that doesn't become very clear okay actually this force will be acting in the x direction similarly if a stress is being applied that is on the x surface sigma x is set okay the same thing will happen but application of the external stress looking at it we are not able to make out what is the direction in which the force is going to be applied that is one of the problem of this way of looking at it okay i am just showing 
many cases where that it's not that easy. Okay. Let us take suppose a material which contains a screw dislocation instead of a screw, an edge dislocation is there. That same material where an edge dislocation is there. Instead of a shear stress, we apply a tensile stress on these surfaces. Tensile are a compressive stress. Then what do we naturally expect? to happen to the edge dislocation. This dislocation under the action of a tensile or a compressive stress is essentially it's pulling it apart or compressing it. And edge dislocation means that having an one extra plane above this slip plane, correct? Above this slip plane, we have an extra plane which is going to be there. If we apply a stress, what will happen? Tensile stress, what will happen? Then, like see this example. Here we have a, this one, I am just showing it. This is normally what it is there. I apply a stress, tensile stress and try to pull it. This will just go in. So the whole extra layer will move inside. So if the whole extra layer move inside, or when this uh, is there like this, to which when I apply a compressive stress, it will be pushing this layer out and out and it will be finally just coming out of the surface. That's how the dislocation will vanish. That means that the dislocation, the as if on the dislocation line, a force is acting, which is able, it is making it move up or down. So now the force is acting, here the force is acting in the x direction, here the force is acting in the y direction. We will call it as F, Y as the component, okay? The application of a tensile stress or a compressive stress on the sample essentially makes the dislocation move up or down. This is what we call it as a non-conservative motion or a climb process of a dislocation, correct? But in this, qualitatively applying a logic, we are able to try to find out in which direction the dislocation is, motion is taking place. But there is an elegant way in which this entire thing could be derived, okay? That is what we will look at it. That is, we wanted to find out a force which is acting on a dislocation, okay? Which is moving in any direction in the crystal, which is stressed internally or externally, okay? If you remember, when we talked about the stress and strains, we said that there are nine components of stress which are there, which we define with respect to a small unit Q, correct? You remember that? That is if you take a small Q, okay. then this is how we defined x, y is here, okay? with respect to this coordinate system which we have chosen. On this phase, we will have sigma xx, okay. In this direction, sigma x is at, correct? This is how the, similarly on all the other phases are there. If we have these components which are known, okay, what will be the force which is acting on any random plane? That expression which we have derived. Suppose we assume that there is a plane which we consider it as a, this plane, okay? And the normal to this plane is n, okay? And the force which is acting across this plane, that is the component F i will be, into n j. This is the sort of expression which we have derived. If you remember that, this is nothing but writing fx will be equal to jx nj, correct? Similarly, we can write an expression with respect to the normal stress which is uh, with, with respect to a plane normal, okay? We can find out the components of the force acting across this plane in x, y and z direction, we have derived that formula. I am not going into that detail, okay? 
So, this will turn out to be if you expand it, it will be x x into n is similarly for f f of y f of z we can write similar expressions correct. This tells what is the force which is going to act across this. Now, let us assume that take care of the slip plane ok. Let us look at that slip plane is defined by the plane normal correct. That is assume that n defines the plane normal to the slip plane. And then what is the force which is going to act if we know that if assume that we apply a load external load ok and the components of the stresses which are going to act on this are given by these terms ok. Then we can find out what is going to be the force which is going to act on this by this expression sigma into n this is how we write it right in the tensorial notation the force which is acting we can write it like this whereas n will be i into n x plus j into n y plus k into n z ok. Sigma will be essentially these terms which will come into the picture correct the 9 components which we know. So, this gives us what is going to be the force which is going to act across the slip plane. Now, we have to look at how do we define n that is if we know a slip plane ok. If you know the line direction you assume that the line direction is, uh, is the direction of the dislocation we define it as u ok. And uh, if the dislocation moves by a distance d in this that is unit vector in the direction. So, the cross product of it n will be equal to u cross d we can write it in the plane normal because in the plane the dislocation line direction and the direction in which the dislocation moves you take it to be a uh, uh, unit vector in the direction then the cross product will tell you uh, the plane. So, n can be now return as u cross d ok where you u is a unit vector parallel to a dislocation line direction and d is a unit vector in the direction of motion of the dislocation ok. But what we have to look at this now is that when this force is being applied suppose it makes the dislocation move because d is the movement of the, dis the dislocation unit vector in the direction of motion of the dislocation when the dislocation moves what is going to be the work which is going to be done is this force ok times the budget vector dot product if you take it that will tell you the force because you remember that when we initially derived ok what is going to be the force which is acting on an area ok that essentially displaces that area by a bias vector. So, if we take the dot product then work will be sigma n because this is not a you should understand that when I put a dot this is not a dot product which we use it for vectors ok this dot b it will come ok this is what the work which is going to be done. If you try to expand this ok that is this force we have already written the terms ok. Then the b can be defined as i into generalized form if you write it i into b x plus j into b y plus k into b z ok. These are all the components of b in x y and z direction the coordinate system which we have chosen ok. Then when we take this product ok that is what essentially is being shown in this 
slide. Now you can see that this is sigma xx into nx into bx plus sigma yx into ny into bx. These are all terms are all scalars, correct? It's only coefficients. Now this can be rearranged in a different form, nx and bx, nx and by there. So if I write it in terms of the coefficients which correspond to nx, then I will be writing it in, in this form, sigma xs into bx plus sigma xy into by. This way I can write it. If I write this way, now this will be equivalent to writing that dot b will be equal to sigma into b okay, dot n. This just changes. Okay. So, these are only some mathematical operation which we have just done. Okay. So, this is equivalent to what is the work which on the plane that is on the dislocation what is the force which is going to act on the dislocation times okay, the distance which it has moved that is equivalent to it. And that force is always going to be negative. Okay. That is what essentially is being given here. Now, we have written n to be equal to okay, u cross d. If we substitute in this, so now this is a vector, this is a vector, correct? This is a vector. So, you know the uh, uh, in vector algebra, scalar uh, vector product, if you look at it, this can be written as that is a dot b cross c can be written as a cross b dot c. These are all the same, correct? Box product. So, the same thing which we do it. So, then this becomes sigma b cross u okay, dot d we can write it. Is it not? What is D? D is a movement you, uh, which has taken place in the uh, dislocation movement direction, unit vector movement. So, this can be returned as equivalent to a force which is F, okay, dot D. That is also equivalent to energy. So, this force now becomes equal to D cross u, right? If you look at this expression, it immediately becomes very clear that the force has to be perpendicular to these two vectors, correct? That means that if it is perpendicular to this vector means that this is u is the line direction, that the force acting on the dislocation is always perpendicular to the line direction. This is the first point which becomes obvious from this. Okay. That means that suppose we have a dislocation which is curved like this. Okay. The force will in this direction because this will be the line direction and here the force will be in this direction here the force will be in this direction, here the force will be, each of this direction you look at this, the force has to be perpendicular to the line direction. Okay. What will be the consequence of it? This has a lot of consequence because this is a very important significant result because this result can explain how the dislocation is going to move and expand. Okay. One of the simplest case which I will consider, suppose we assume that a dislocation is uh, held around these two points, okay. it is being pinned. Okay. Initially the dislocation is like this and some stress is being applied, the dislocation bends like this okay. and then the bending becomes more and at some particular stage it becomes like equivalent to that of a semicircle. When it reaches that stage in this particular case, this is the direction in which the force will be acting, right?
this is the direction when it reaches the case you consider when it becomes a semi circle how will the force act the force will be acting here in this direction on the dislocation but at this one it's being pinned the force is acting in this direction eh? perpendicular so when that happens the dislocation moves in the direction force which is acting in that direction the dislocation is moving so now the dislocation can try to bend around this okay that is what makes the dislocation form loops around precipitates okay this we will come later when we talk about dislocation precipitate interaction but what i wanted you to understand is that though the stress is applied in the same direction this is the direction in which the external stress is being applied but the force which is acting on the dislocation because of the external stress is always perpendicular to the line direction because of that this dislocation this part may move in this direction this part may move in this direction in the expansion correct so this is something which is very significant which one should understand that this one sigma dot b because here we started with with respect to a plane normal okay the force which is acting with respect to a plane normal and now using this mathematics we had come to this one where this is a force this equivalent to because b is a vector correct so the force which is acting across a plane which is perpendicular to the bias vector this force is called as the peach coiler force okay is this clear okay so if this is clear now what are terms which we should know about the forces which are acting on the dislocations there are it's a generalized expression which we have derived if you know the components of the stress which are acting on different directions with respect to the crystallographic system which we have chosen okay we can find out the force which is acting across the bias vector direction and also the force which is acting in the slip plane on the dislocation line we have derived that expression okay so essentially if you look at it i will just write it down because i consider that this is one of the most significant uh, because this expression will be required also further to look at various cases is a descent into bx okay this is one and this is nothing but the g equals i into gx correct plus j into gy plus k into g is a then the line direction u we write it as i into ux plus k into uy plus j into u is a by just vector j into dy plus k into b z these are all the things that is this is the way we generally represent the bias vector and the line direction and the peach coiler force okay then if this is there the other significant expression f is equal to g cross u okay this is how we can find out the force which is acting on a dislocation which has a line direction u and the bias vector uh, b okay and this f whatever you consider is always the force acting per unit length of the dislocation okay that we should always remember okay let us consider some examples okay one is an effect of external stress on the dislocation motion okay we will consider it on a single dislocation 
another is suppose dislocations are present within the material what are the types of forces which are going to act between the dislocations when more than one dislocation is present that is first we consider a case when it's an effect of an external applied force on a single dislocation okay this is almost what we are trying to do is coming back to initially we started with the problem of looking at what is the direction in which the force will be up, uh, acting on a dislocation you remember the case we considered this case assume that the dislocation is there okay suppose we choose the coordinate system we said y said x y and what is the direction if this is the applied in this direction what is the direction in which okay in this particular case b x positive direction is the one which the bias vector is going to be there for an edge dislocation what is the direction in which the force will be acting on this dislocation we want to find out okay right so what is the simplest way in which we can do this okay we can do it for an edge as well as a screw dislocation let us first consider the screw dislocation in the case of a screw dislocation if we consider the internal stresses which are generated are only in sigma yz and sigma xz direction with respect to a coordinates which we have chosen that is for a screw dislocation this is the direction positive direction of the line direction and the bias vector is also going to be in this direction correct so u will become k into u z correct with respect to a vector notation which you have taken the others are going to be zero because this is a generalized direction of uh, vector for u then for the bias vector then it will become b will become k into b z right only the z component because that expression which you have derived is for a uh, with respect to a coordinate system the generalized direction for u and the generalized direction for the bias vector okay now any external stress if you try to apply and uh, find out the components of the external stress which are going to be there okay then the components which external stress will have is the nine components will be there sigma x x sigma y y sigma is said is said then sigma x y sigma y is said sigma x is said all these components are after uh, load which have applied in a particular direction their components will be there along these various directions with respect to a coordinate axis these nine components but which of the ones will be acting on the effect is only sigma y z and sigma x z because that is where the displacements are so only these components of the external stress will have any effect on the screw dislocation others will not have any effect on the screw dislocation is this clear okay so we will consider this case that if that is the case in this expression of g which we have written here Okay, here it has to be B Z, correct. Then K B Z, correct. Now B X and B Y, all these terms are zero. Now what will this G X turns out to be? G X will turn out to be sigma X Z into B Z, correct. G Y will be equal to sigma Y Z into B Z. G is said will be equal to sigma is said is said into B is said, but this term will be equal to zero because sigma is said is said does not have any effect. So only this. So now G becomes I into sigma x is said into B is said plus J into sigma y is said into B is said. Correct. so what is the direction in which the force is going to operate this is g cross u so that will become b is a cross u is k into u is that correct 
finally this expression will turn out to be i cross j will be minus j j cross k will be i correct so this will be i into sigma y z into b z into u z minus j into sigma x z into b z into u z okay if u is a, a vector which we taken to be essentially unit vector then u z term will be just one correct now we can find out that what does this i means this can be written as f can be written into i into fx plus j into fy okay this term equals fx this term becomes that is yeah plus i will put this as equal r yeah minus so this with a minus sign okay will be minus sign will become f y correct so this tells what all the forces which are going to act on the dislocation x and y direction alone which is going to be there okay but if you try to look at what is the net force okay that will be if we integrate it over all the area it will turn out to be zero on the dislocation but what this is important is that this is just telling us that what will be the effect of the applied force now let us take that internal stresses if you take it okay what is sigma y z is the stress which we are externally applying it correct so at any particular point with respect to dislocation we try we are trying to find out what is going to be the external stress which will be acting on it correct with respect to this suppose why is it we apply it okay that is x is in the only y is it if you are trying to apply on this what it tells is that the force is going to act in fx correct that is in the x direction the force is going to act in a screw dislocation this is equivalent to the case of the screw dislocation which we have considered okay in the case of a screw dislocation which we considered earlier okay okay the stress is being applied y is in this direction and in this direction on the bottom surface y is okay and the u is in this direction by this vector is also in this direction and because this is the coordinate system which you have chosen x y and this head now what we are finding is that the force is going to act in the x direction correct when sigma y z stress is being applied on this plane the force is in this direction what is going to happen that is suppose the stress which is being applied is sigma x z sigma x z means that on the x surface in the y z direction we are applying a stress shear stress when that stress is being applied in this way the force which is acting is given by only the second term that is f y now from this expression it automatically becomes clear that if we apply a stress in a particular direction what is the direction in which the force will be acting on the dislocation and that is the direction in which dislocation will move so under the action of the external stress if we apply a shear stress like this this dislocation will move if the stress which is applied is on the y surface in the z direction now the dislocation will move in this direction or in this direction this becomes very clear from this expression but otherwise the qualitative way in which initially we started with it doesn't become very clear now let us consider the another in the case of a 
uh, edge dislocation because so far we have considered for a screw dislocation. In the case of a edge dislocation, if we consider, we assume that we have a Okay. This is the coordinate system which we choose x, y and z. Okay. This is the u and by just vector will be in this direction. Okay. If we apply any load to this cube, okay, we can find out the components of the stress which are going to be there and applied stress components in various uh, uh, shear as well as the with respect to a coordinate system. Okay. But as far as an edge dislocation is concerned, the only stresses which are present internal stresses are sigma xx, sigma yy, sigma zdz and sigma xy, all other components are zero. So, only these components can act on them. Then what is going to be the line direction u will be k into u z because it is a long the z direction. What is going to be the bias vector? Bias vector is i into b x, correct. Now, let us derive an expression that these are all the stresses which are going to be. Now, what is going to be the pitch coiler force? If we look at this, now we will find that g x will be equal to sigma x x into b x because all other components, these components will turn out to be 0, correct. g y will be equal to sigma y x into b x plus g z will be equal to sigma z x into b x, correct. Sigma z dx will not have any effect on the dislocation displacement. So, this term is going to be 0. Now, g will be i into g x plus g y b x plus j into sigma y x into b x, correct. Now, we can take that uh, what is the force which is going to act on the dislocation? That force is given by g cross u. Okay. Here again if you take it, the cross product, i cross k will be, j cross k will be i vx into bx into u z minus j into xx into bx into u z. u z is the unit vector. So, now we can see that this corresponds to f x, okay. This term corresponds to minus f i, correct. That means that if we apply a stress, assume that we are applying a stress which is only in the shear stress in x y direction. That is, uh, y plane in the x direction. That is what this represents. This introduces a stress. What is the direction in which this is under positive direction? We apply sigma y x. Y just vector is in this direction. The force will be acting in this direction. This becomes obvious from this expression. Suppose we apply a tensile stress which is on this phase, that is stress which is normal to this x surface, okay. Then the force which is going to act is this is f i. So, you can immediately see that the force is in the y direction. That means that application of a tensile stress which we qualitatively by looking at this demonstration, we try to understand it, this becomes obvious from this mathematical expression itself. This makes life much simpler because we can find out what direction stresses will be acting. So, what we have to remember only these expressions, okay, and that is all. This is all which we have to remember.
to calculate the force which is going to act on a dislocation. This force is very important. Unless we know the force, we will not be able to tell how the dislocation is going to move in a dislocation. Especially when the dislocation is a mixed dislocation, okay, the force will be acting on different directions on the dislocation at every point. Though the stress is applied in the same direction, but the effect of the stress on the dislocation, which acts in the form of a force, and it's a virtual force, as if a force is trying to push the dislocation, that force acts in a always perpendicular to the line direction. Is it clear? Okay. So far, what we have considered is now, uh, essentially, to derive an expression for the force which is uh, acting on a dislocation, okay, and consider two cases where and when external stress apply, what is the direction in which the force will be acting on the dislocation. The next case which we will be considered is that when there are many dislocations are present, what are the types of forces which are going to act between the dislocations, okay. What sort of force which will be acting, a uh, force which will be acting uh, depending upon the direction in which the dislocations are present, okay. These dislocations could be one could be an edge, one could be a screw dislocation, okay. Their directions could be different. This is what exactly which is required to know when we deform a sample, okay. A lot of dislocations are generated, how they interact, their interaction will lead to whether a repulsive force or a attractive force. Depending upon that, the response of the material will change. These are all the aspects for that to understand how the material is going to respond, we should be able to find out the type of forces which act between uh, dislocations. This we will take it in the next lecture. Okay.